Coming up next on Good Taste, perk up. This delicious butter coffee will get you going. People thought I was a little crazy, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> it's all crazy good at this Austin spot. Then, inside a serious southern seafood sensation. Oh, the smells are pretty amazing. And so are the flavors at this historic Pearl hotspot. Plus, in H-Town, a ramen revolution, made even better with a splash of Japanese whiskey. Oh, man. Yeah, it's super aromatic. Good day starts right now. Hi everyone, I'm Tangie Patton and welcome to Good Taste, your go-to spot each week for where to dine. Up first, how about a picnic? It's a hip new spot in Austin that bursts with energy. Their butter coffee and fantastic food will keep you going all day long. Healthy eating doesn't always have to be a drag. Well, this is our first time, but we had heard it was good, healthy food, so we decided we'd do it. It can be a picnic. I can wake up every day and feel good about what I do because I'm able to positively make an impact in people's lives. That's Naomi, the feisty entrepreneur determined to make what's good for you taste amazing. And that includes their famous butter coffee. More on that bullet of energy in a minute. It's really good and it feels super healthy. It's all at a bright and urban Austin eatery, aptly named Picnic. Here, food is designed to nourish both body and soul. Like this fresh catch, a wild caught salmon on a bed of wilted spinach, herb garlic quinoa garnished with pecan and pomegranate seeds. These are the fish tacos. <laughs> they look delicious. Can't wait to eat them. <laughs> the fish tacos, like everything else at Picnic, are gluten free, made with tempura battered black drum and a cassava flour tortilla, straddled with pickled red onion, sesame orange slaw, and drizzled with house-made chipotle aioli. And this blondie ice cream sandwich is so good, you'll think grandma made it, but it's grain-free too. A recipe owner Naomi Ward calls a happy accident she discovered on her journey to wellness. How in the world did you end up in the restaurant business? Um, I found out that I was celiac when I was 19, so I ended up having to go off of gluten. But after college, I just decided I needed to go on a journey to kind of explore what I wanted to do with my life. So I ended up living in yoga ashrams and kind of on this journey of introspection and self-study. On that journey to overcome and understand food allergies, Naomi experienced firsthand the mind-body connection. I feel like I've been led, you know, and, and, and you can call it instinct, you can call it intuition, you can call it God, but it's always about listening to your gut and to your instinct and to that kind of divine guidance. That path led her to Austin, where she started selling organic, locally sourced grab-and-go breakfast items out of a repurposed shipping container on South Lamar. It was a huge hit. One reason, this energizing jolt of joe. So tell me about the butter coffee. Yes. Because that is the buzz yes. everywhere is Picnic's butter coffee. When we opened three and a half years ago at our trailer, people thought I was a little crazy. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> so basically, grass-fed butter and MCT oil, which is a derivative of coconut oil, those two ingredients in combination are just really good for curbing your appetite, your energy levels, gives you increased cognitive function. They know how to make gluten-free taste great. If you're gonna eat French toast, eat this one. It's made from their light and fluffy house-baked bread. Can I get a uh, side of dressing in this guy? They opened this brick and mortar restaurant late this summer. Dinner is on the menu too, and there's almost always a wait to get in. They're kind of breaking ground for Austin in this kind of new wave of advanced, like healthy eating and cooking, so I love it. Picnic is also a paleo-friendly kitchen. Another bestseller is the very nutritious and rejuvenating bone broth. 
with cayenne pepper, collagen, and turmeric. Proteins are prepared with pride at Picnic, all locally sourced, like this pasture-raised pork belly, seasoned and rubbed with sea salt and coconut sugar, cured for three days. That bone broth, also part of the prep for the pork belly, that ends up in the oven. Okay, carry on. And diced before going into one of their most popular dishes, fried Brussels sprouts. Okay, Brussels sprouts healthy, I get. Pork belly. So you've got a little bit of something for everyone here, right? Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a delicious dish. Added to the mix, a maple syrup vinaigrette with Dijon mustard and that healthy avocado oil. Quick and easy, all in one pan. It's topped with nutty fresh Parmesan cheese. Fingers allowed? Yes. <laughs> mm. It's a nice maple finish to it. It's Who delicious. would have ever thought maple with the Brussels sprouts? That's really good. Delicious. And healthy. Who would have thought healthy could be this much fun? Do you think you developed food allergies so that would lead you on this yes. path? Yes, my journey with food and my allergies and my own journey of self-discovery has been all over the map, but it was always uh, with the intention that I would end up here, and I know that for a fact now. Everything you've gone through up until now prepared you for this moment. Yes, absolutely, 100%. I love that. Yeah. I am hooked on their food and definitely hooked on those delicious coffees. Coming up next, talk about a shot of energy. Asian fusion kicked up a notch from this talented, fun chef. Not really a diet-friendly dish, is it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be fun. But next, pull up a chair where they don't skimp on the shrimp, and dinner is a show in itself. This place is like nothing you've ever seen before. We wanted to do it right here on the bar, right in front of all the guests, so they'd be able to see. Good things come from Cisco. Welcome back. Every year, San Antonio continues to top the list of tourist destinations in the state. But here's an insider tip. When you visit San Antonio, definitely see the Riverwalk, but come eat at Pearl. The newly renovated historic district, just a mile or two from the Alamo, is booming with an eclectic mix of cool new restaurants. One of our favorites is a mix of micro brews and Gulf Coast seafood. You're going to love Southerly. Here, the goodness from our Gulf hooks up with Southern Charm. Fresh off the boat, Red Snapper comes in daily, along with steaming mountains of sweet Gulf shrimp. You'll have dreams about Southerly's deviled eggs, drenched in goodness with a generous dollop of bacon jam. There are sizzling steaks, even scratch-made giant pretzels that pair up perfectly with Southerly's house-brewed beers. The whole ambiance, it's kind of like southerly, it's homey, but at the same time, it's really industrial and really cool. I really like it. Southerly's honors the original brewery's glory days, and it doesn't go unnoticed by locals who share in that past. My grandfather was the original CFO of the Pearl, and so when I walk up and see, you know, the lights and how it's all redone, it, it, he's, he's been here, and it, it's nice to come back and see how they've kept the original architecture. Southerly's is still hallowed ground for beer lovers. Some big time beers are brewed on the loft right upstairs. Les Locke is the head brewer here and I would imagine this is a fun place to brew beer. Absolutely. It's so much history here in this building. We're literally brewing in the footsteps of where people brewed for over 120 years. Some of the brewery's original vats and barrels are back in use. Even wine barrels and bourbon barrels are in the mix. So how long does it take start to finish for a brew to? About 21 to 28 days. At least four new brews are crafted every week. You also kind of have an adventurous streak, don't you? I do. We, uh, we like to employ a lot of uh, food in our beers, so you know, herbs and vegetables and uh, fruits, of course, that are seasonal that we actually play off what the kitchen is doing. Shrimp oil, ribeye, clear line. You may come to Southerly for drinks, but you'll definitely want to stay for dinner. Seafood here shines. Here's a really beautiful Gulf Red Snapper. Um, so this, this guy is really, really fresh and we'll use the entire thing. We do a, a dish with the filet and then we remove the throats and we use all the throats so we can get our hands on. Those throats don't go to waste. 
In fact, they're a very popular dish here. Chef Balfour's granddad introduced him to the longtime Southern favorite. You no, know, as a little kid, I was, I don't want to try anything that's a throw, but oh, you learn to eat them. It's one of the things that you do, and um, really, really cool. They're very delicious. Yes. Not only are they dramatic to look at when it comes to the table, but they taste amazing. And so does the cracker crusted gulf snapper filet topped with lump crab meat. This is very much stuff that I grew up eating. Some say the best seat in the house is right here, kitchen side, where you can watch all the action. Okay, so one of the cool things, the shrimp boil, obviously shrimp very boil. popular. Yeah, it's one of our most popular dishes. So we wanted to do it right here on the bar, right in front of all the guests so they'd be able to see. So we just have a little bit of uh, core bouillon here or some some stock with a little bit of uh, spices and herbs in it. All the traditional good stuff here, potatoes, corn, lots of spice, and of course, plenty of gulf shrimp. Oh, the smells are pretty amazing. A little bit of this. A little more lemon spice and butter, of course, and the shrimp boil is served. Uh, Y'all got the best seat in the house. Yes, we requested it. <laughs> You'll have to visit Southerly's more than once to try all the tempting choices. But rest assured, your favorites will always be around. From the chef's kitchen, right to yours. Every week I like to show you a special dish from one of the restaurants we visit that you can make at home. And today, it's a good one. These are the deviled eggs from Southerly. But these aren't just any deviled eggs. These are topped with candied bacon. A bacon jam so good you'll want to eat it right out of the bowl all by itself and it's really easy to do. You start with about a cup of bacon cut into the ends, small pieces. If you have leftover bacon it's easy just to throw the leftovers in there. And I like to get mine started on the cooking process and I'll speed things up a little bit now for the purposes of TV but generally I like my bacon to be well on its way before I add the other ingredients. Then you just start adding the ingredients. You're going to add about half a cup of onions chopped up about half a cup of brown sugar, about a tablespoon of dark molasses. It adds a nice richness to it. And a couple of tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Next, a cup of apple cider vinegar. Just let all of this come together and slowly slowly cook down. All right, fast forward about 30 to 45 minutes after it's cooked low and slow. This is what you end up with. All right, on to the eggs. The deviled egg filling recipe is on my website at goodtaste.tv. The chef gave us the entire recipe. It's a really good one and has capers in it. So you can get the whole recipe online. So you pipe your filling, obviously, into your deviled eggs. Take a little bit of fresh herbs, smoky paprika, and then the candied bacon jam. And it's as easy as it looks. Just spoon all of this delicious bacon jam. A little goes a long way right on top of your eggs. If you want, you can add more herbs if you like to get chefy with it, and voila. Okay, you guys saw that the top fell off, right? Oh well, it still tastes fantastic. Cheers. Mmm, this is so good. Coming up, don't skip dessert. I've got delicious wine pairings designed just for sweets. But next, a one-of-a-kind Japanese gastropub in Houston, where delicious eye-popping small plates pair perfectly with a shot of Japanese whiskey. I kind of get it now. Scary good. Good Taste will be right back. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. Houston's Midtown is fast becoming a mecca for foodies, and we found a fun and funky spot in the heart of it all. It's an Asian gastro pub with the chef who's as colorful and creative as the fabulous food on his menu. Hang up your nine to five and head to Izakaya. A little more rock and roll, a little more fun. A Japanese gastro pub like no other in Houston's trendy Midtown. It's really exciting. Everything has a lot of flavor and spice to it. Lots to take in here, well before you taste the eye-popping delicious food. I like the inside, it's a good atmosphere. Look around, there's a million things to look at. Almost as popular as this chef and the food. 
The dramatic contemporary Japanese murals painted by a local tattoo artist. Now they've become part of like the Houston scene now. We actually have people that walk in here just to take pictures of the murals. There's also a polished wood grain raw bar crafted from a single tree trunk. Even the tabletops have a story. For this one, this is a 109 year old tree from the, from the heights. Izakaya is big on personality all around. Chef Jean-Philippe Gaston was born in France but traveled the world. As a result, his creative, small, shareable plates are infused with a global vibe. I like how open it is and a good variety of food with some new kind of trendier items. It's just a fun place to be in. And you get a lot of little different things. You have a raw bar, you have a sit-down area, you have a place where you can stand and just hover. Yeah, patios, you have all kinds of stuff that make it really accessible to everybody. Just come have a drink and enjoy the good time. This surfer guy turned karaoke performer. What do you sing? Oh man, they have a pretty bad range. So, <laughs> Give from us a little sample. No, no. <laughs> Is an incredibly talented chef who makes any visit to Izakaya that much more fun. Do you play in the kitchen? Do uh, you have fun with it? <laughs> we do. Uh, I'm pretty goofy. I'm pretty strict as well because of my background and I, and I tend to get angry and yell a lot, but only because of love, I'd like to say. <laughs> and they love him right back. Izakaya is adorned with little chotskis, tokens of affection that his customers and his employees routinely give him. People would grab me little knickknacks here and there and I ended up putting them everywhere so they could see him when they came back. Perhaps his thank you to them is best reflected in the eclectic dishes he sends out from this kitchen. Like the braised, then grilled Portuguese octopus, drizzled with a zesty yuzo kosho vinaigrette, topped with chela cherry pepper and micro cilantro greens. Or the sizzling yakisoba with pan seared noodles, chicken, and fresh veggies, all soaked in a sweet and tangy yakisoba sauce, then garnished with bonito flakes and a plump 62 degree egg. Cooked to perfection. One of the house favorites, grilled Mexican street corn rolled in yuzo kosho mayo, seasoned with a zesty mix of togarachi and tahine spices, then rolled again in a trio of Parmesan, Gouda, and Gruyere cheeses. One of Chef Philippe's favorites is a dry ramen, featuring a garlic cream sauce, made even richer with a touch of brandy-cured foie gras. Oh man! Yeah, it's super aromatic. If you don't like garlic, don't eat this dish. The chef starts off with sauteed chicken thighs. It's a little hot in the kitchen, so. A little. <laughs> then come the mushrooms. To that garlic cream base, he adds a touch of a very concentrated broth for umami. Then the noodles. Not really a diet friendly dish, is it? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be fun. It wouldn't be fun, you're absolutely right. A sprinkle of sesame seeds, and it's done. Mmm. <laughs> oh, whoa. That is amazing. So good, you want to lick the spoon. This chef not only has a passion for fantastic food, Japanese whiskeys get his attention too. Izakaya boasts an extensive collection, offering nine different whiskey flights. Sampling is an adventure. Sure. Yeah. More. That's nice, this. yeah. Even nicer, the even older Yamazaki. <laughs> that was really I kind of get it now. Like, scary good. You'll be inspired to raise a glass at Izakaya too. I love Japanese restaurants, so this place is really cool. We'll be back. Time for my wine finds of the week, and today we're talking dessert wines. These wines go great with cookies, pies, cakes, or their dessert all by themselves. At first, I'm starting with a Chardonnay, but this is a very fruit forward Chardonnay. It's called Lost Maples. And yes, Texas wine fans, this is a Texas wine. The Chardonnay comes from the Vanderpool area. Very fruit forward, bright flavors of apples and pears, and it's only $7.98 a bottle. 
Okay, moving on to something fun and effervescent. This is the Prima Masso Pink Moscato. This effervescent wine has vibrant flavors of cherries, strawberries. It's very low alcohol, so it makes it a wonderful party wine. It's a crowd pleaser at about $12 a bottle. Okay, another one your friends are going to love and you, and it really could be dessert all by itself. This is the Cupcake Sparkling Red. Everyone loves the cupcake wines. They're so popular. Well, this one is no different. It comes from Northern Italy, a region known for its sparklings. It's bright, bubbly, tons of bean cherries on the palate. It's priced at about $13 a bottle. As always, I found all my wines at HEB. Need a little downtime? When we come back, we'll tell you how you could win a relaxing weekend at the beautiful Houstonian Hotel. How about a weekend away? This could be your chance, complete with spa treatments. Head to goodtaste.tv right now and sign up for a chance to win a luxurious weekend at the Houstonian, complete with spa treatments for you and a guest at the beautiful, award-winning Trellis Spa. Follow us on Facebook at Good Taste with Tangi and on Twitter and Instagram at Tangi Patton. And as always, if you missed any of this week's show, you can catch it online at goodtaste.tv. Sign up for our newsletter. That's all our time for this week. Thanks so much for joining us. Cheers to good taste.